Good afternoon, Fast Insurance. Yes, of course. No, it's no problem, we can do that now. I uh, just need to take a couple of details from you. Try you coming, lads. Oh, I'm sorry about that, sir. Welcome back to Everard Junction. In today's video we're going to work on putting some water in the canal and some water effects on top of it as you can see there. Plenty of litter and rubbish in the canal. We'll also add a canal boat and I'm also going to do quite a bit of work to the office building that contains fast insurance on the left hand side who are unfortunately located right next to a busy railway line and they can't hear anybody on the phone. Okay, so it's time to uh, put some water effects into the canal and uh, I've learned my lesson from last time. I've made the canal quite a bit shallower and that's just so it doesn't use up uh, so much of the deep pour uh, water as it is quite expensive. I previously had a straight canal in this location and it cost quite a lot of money for me to fill it up but it was a removable section so I've placed that into storage and there might be a you know an excuse in future to use it somewhere else or even on a different layout so it's not gone completely to waste. So here in this case the canal is quite a lot shallower I should need quite a bit less product to get the desired effect. So since you last saw this section, I have made a couple of changes and that's just so that we can uh, ensure that this is going to work properly. So I've made a dam here at this end. It's just a temporary piece of plywood screwed to the baseboard edge with a piece of plastic just to ensure that uh, we've got a nice seal against the baseboard edge there. So we shouldn't get any leaking out from that end. And I've also done something similar underneath the uh, bridge just there. So at the very back there, and you can't actually see it, which was the desired effect, there is a divider, which I've painted black and glued into position and sealed all around the edges with a bit of sculpt mold. And it plunges the, uh, the bridge into darkness, which is great because from normal viewing distance, uh, it just looks like a, you know, a proper bridge, a proper dark sort of tunnel bridge, whatever you want to call it. So you don't see the bright green grass of the back scene sticking through uh, the other side. So it looks a little bit more authentic, a little bit more convincing from the sort of the you know, perspective of how the model looks. And it will also stop the water or the resin uh, when I pour it in to the canal here. It's going to run obviously down there, it's going to run this way and uh, those two things will stop it spilling out as it cures. And then once it has cured I'll simply uh, remove these pieces here and we should get a nice edge on the canal just there and the plan in future is to come along with a, some nice uh, birch uh, plywood and, and put a nice fascia on the front of the layout once I've finished uh, messing around with glue and filler and all that stuff and we'll get the front of the layout looking quite a bit more professional and that should just be able to butt up nicely to the water effects. You'll also notice that I have installed a small bit of dirt uh, path small sort of dirt pathway there and I've also put a set of railings up as well just to a bit of health and safety stop people uh, falling into the canal as they try and negotiate walking through there in the darkness. I'm quite happy with how that looks it certainly looks a lot more authentic um, you see the uh, the sort of transition from light to dark under the bridge just there and you can't see um, the sort of clumsy bits of back scene that would have showed through previously so it'd be easier for me to film in future and just to the naked eye it just looks a little bit more a little bit more interesting a little bit more realistic uh, rather than being able to see you know plywood and back scenes and stuff at the far end so the deep pour water is all mixed up and ready to go. This is just going to be the initial first pour. I'm probably going to do two separate pours. So I'll pour this in and let it dry and I'll uh, apply the second one uh, perhaps in a few days time. So as I said, I'll go ahead and let that cure 
It'll take at least 24 hours to cure, so I'll just leave it alone, don't disturb it. And we'll come back and add some more in future, along with some extra details as well. The first initial pour of the uh, realistic water, or the resin, has now set. And for the most part, it's looking pretty good. But we did have a bit of an unfortunate uh, issue, but it's okay. We should be able to get it fixed. So just behind the scrapyard, you can see we've got a bit of a uh, sinkhole just here. So there must have been a pinhole in the canal and a very small amount of resin has leaked out of the scene, uh, which is a bit unfortunate. So there's now a, uh, a circle of resin on the floor that's rock hard. And as you can see by the amount of resin that's actually disappeared, it must have been a very small leak. Um, so it would have taken many hours to uh, fully show what was going on. And I'd long since gone to bed for the evening. So a bit unfortunate, but you can see the rest of it is set. And we've got a couple of air bubbles around that area as well, which I suspect is just a result of the resin uh, being disturbed uh, while that small area sort of leaked away. But it's no matter, because it's only the first pour of resin and I've got lots of scenic details and bits and pieces to put into the canal before we do the next pour. Uh, so I'll just make sure that I cover that up. So the next thing I'm going to do is add some sediment and some litter at the sides of the canal, paying a little bit more attention to this side of the canal, the town side, as that's where people are, you know, they've got easy access, so you're going to get more litter and rubbish on that side. But it's important to try and replicate it and I've noticed on a lot of uh, canals you sort of get this uh, sediment building up at the edges and in extreme cases it can actually uh, cause uh, some of the canal boats to run aground uh, when they come up to moor. So if we can see some sediment and build up at the edges of the canal I think that'll actually go a long way to make things look a bit more authentic. Okay, so I've added the uh, sediment, as you can see, and that's done a lovely job of covering up those air bubbles and that nasty uh, little spot where the water had leaked out. And we're also going to have the benefit of this uh, centre section looking deeper as if the canal has been dredged. So I'm going to glue this into position. I'm not sure how it will behave when the resin is poured on top of it, you know, whether or not it might move around or float even. So I'm just going to glue it down with some rocket card glue as that uh, dries nice and quick. As usual, just spray it with some isopropyl alcohol just to wet it and I'll let the glue soak in. Well that's well and truly soaked in. I've used uh, a mix of rocket card glue and uh, just regular uh, white glue, hopefully it will go off fairly quickly as it would be nice to try and get some of this done today. Next thing to do is to just sprinkle a little bit more uh, over the top, it's all a little bit uniform, it's just some ballast. Um, so now I've got some grout and uh, some Woodland Scenics uh, Earth Blend, which I've just had lying around for years in the collection. And we'll just sprinkle a bit of that over the top in a few places. And then once this is all dried we'll come back and give it a lick of paint. So the sediment has now dried. I'm just gonna take the airbrush and paint some of this, make it look a little bit darker, a little bit more murky, so it looks a little bit better in the water. And the color I'm gonna be using for that is uh, Vallejo again. And this is uh, German camouflage black brown. One of my favorite colors, a real dark earthy brown, works great in a lot of the ground cover I use on the layout.
So that's the sort of thing we're looking for. It's all a little bit of an experiment, but I am quite pleased uh, with how it's going so far. So we've got uh, quite a build up of sediment and dirt on both sides of the canal, which certainly seems to be a very real thing and a very real problem for canal boaters in real life. And then we've got uh, the water showing through in the centre here, which should hopefully allude to some sort of depth um, in the middle of the canal and it, it won't look like it's got a flat uh, base. As I say, all a bit of an experiment, so we'll see how it goes, but uh, I'm quite interested uh, to see what happens. I'm pleased with it so far, so fingers crossed. Next, we'll add the litter, the dirt and the rubbish into the canal, and then we'll start adding a little bit more of that realistic water, and hopefully things will go to plan. So I've got lots of bits and pieces to put into the canal. We'll start off with one of the trademark washing machines. I've printed out so many of these, I'm just sort of trying to use them up in various places. And because uh, we have a large number of them over here in the scrapyard, it's uh, entirely possible for perhaps one of them to have fallen over the fence into the canal. So. We'll include that, nice little bit of detail. You can see I've prepared some more drinks cans. We've got some different colors there as well. A little bit of variety. Got some bricks, classic item to find in a canal, uh, loose bricks. Those are made by scale model scenery. Just come on a sprue and you cut them out. Some bicycles, scale model scenery kit as well. And I've just sort of painted those up in a sort of faded uh, drab condition. And we'll chuck those into the canal as well. A traffic cone, another essential item, and some pallets. Again, those are scale model scenery items. Some shopping trolleys, perhaps the must-have for any canal. These are made by Prizer, and they're not entirely in keeping with a British-looking uh, shopping trolley, although they're not too far off. It's so small in the scale, it's kind of hard to achieve, but uh, they're the best thing I can do uh, for the moment, so we'll, we'll add a couple of those. And of course, some old car tyres, these are just random tires from models and random stuff I've just had lying around for years in the collection. And I've also scrunched up some paper and glued it, painted it gloss black to represent some sort of black uh, rubbish bags. Again, something you would find chucked in a canal. So that's starting to look a little bit more like a 1980s British canal. I've got plenty of fly tipping and waste dumped on both sides. And I've made sure, you know, sort of the trolleys and the bin bags and stuff, you know, the more sort of domestic stuff is on this side because that's where people are going to get to more easily. And then a little bit more of the sort of general industrial stuff is along this side, perhaps overspill from the scrapyard where you know, stuff's gone over the top of the fence by accident. And I've also just put a few drinks counts on that far side as well because it's quite reasonable for somebody to be stood here and to throw the drinks can at the fence or try and get it into the scrapyard and it ends up landing in the far side of the canal. And also the water would you know, move some of the bits and pieces about. Uh, so for example, got the, wash the uh, shopping trolleys and stuff, you know, they've just been pushed uh, straight over the edge. Got one there, one there, there's another one a little bit closer to the camera. So I'll glue the rest of those loose details down, go over it with a little bit of paint just to give the effect of some mud uh, that's washed over some of this detail. The cans are a little bit too vibrant at the moment. So we'll tone those down and then we'll uh, pour in some of the water, just being careful. And uh, hopefully it'll all go to plan and we'll end up with uh, a sort of nice, uh, sort of nasty looking canal. Hopefully that washing machine should just peek above the surface. That would look quite good. And perhaps see you know, the odd uh, corner or handle of the shopping trolley as well, just poking above the surface of the water. 
Okay, so the glue has now dried. I just put a little bit of PVA glue over those loose details, and I also added some random litter, newspapers, crisp packets, things like that. So I'm just going to go over that with a little bit of the Vallejo black brown paint, quite thinned, just give it a sort of light dusting, just to uh, give this sort of illusion that there's some mud uh, covering up some of this stuff from the bed of the canal. So now we'll add some more of the deep pour water and I'm just going to be pouring that in uh, relatively thin layers and just build it up. I don't want to put a massive uh, slab of resin down in there because it will get quite hot as it cures and that could damage or ruin uh, some of the details that are sitting on the bed of the canal. As it flows into position, I'm just going to use an old paintbrush just to encourage the resin to get into all of the uh, details and small spaces. Okay, well, that's the sort of effect I was looking for. It seems to be going to plan. So hopefully nothing will melt as that starts to cure and we'll come back and add another layer and make the uh, canal a little deeper. So that additional layer of the deep pour water has now dried and it's difficult for you to see because the camera is uh, really fixated on the reflection in the canal but I can confirm to you to the naked eye uh, it does look quite a bit more impressive than the reflection of a white brick wall. Uh, the camera is really overemphasizing that. But there you can see some of the details and the bricks and the uh, drinks cans and newspapers and what have you. As I say, difficult to film, but the details are there and they're still very much visible. So I'm going to bring the, the level of the water up a little bit more with one more additional pour of water and then that should uh, be good. That should sort this out and we'll leave that to dry. While I've been waiting for the resin to dry, I have done a little bit of weathering to the bridge girders. They still need a little bit more work, a little bit more detail adding to them. But as you can see, I've done some light graffiti and some rust. They just need a coat of matte varnish and a little bit more to get them up to standard, but I'm quite pleased with those. Similar to the last time I had a canal in this section, I would like to add a canal boat. Uh, previously, I had a quick go at uh, building a canal boat of my own. It was quite a tedious and lengthy process, and there's only so much I could do in the time I had. Uh, so this time round, I've uh, fired up the 3D printer, and we have a new canal boat for the scene. I downloaded the file off of Thingiverse, and the chap who uh, created it is in the bottom of the screen just there. Uh, so there you go. Quite pleased with that. Uh, it took several hours to print out, but uh, I could just leave that running and go and do something else. So the final layer has dried. I left it for about 72 hours to fully cure. And uh, as you can see, what a lovely finish on the top of that water. Uh, so the next thing to do is to add some effects, of course. And I've also got that uh, canal boat, which I need to finish painting. And we can get a little bit more life and movement into the scene. All of the litter and waste and rubbish has come out quite nicely. So you can see the traffic cone. A little bit of hint of blue from one of the drinks cans. There's quite clearly a shopping trolley on its side. And you can just sort of pick out all of that uh, discarded filth. But it's not so close to the surface that, you know, it would be improbable for you know, a boat uh, to go past. So now I'll just quickly remove the piece of plastic. And of course, as I said at the beginning of the video, I will come back here and put a nice fascia on the front of the layout.
off camera I've been very busy working on the canal boat doing all of the various painting and adding various accessories and little bits of detail these are quite tricky to paint in this scale you know they're not very large and canal boats are typically very uh, well presented very ornate with multiple colors and designs so I've done the best I can with various colors and small brushes a bit of masking tape here and there and as you can see we've got something resembling what you might see on a canal boat in terms of uh, paint design I've added a few accessories, we've got a bicycle on the roof, there's a few ropes and lines which is just a piece of cotton that I soaked, uh, soaked in glue and just sort of you know laid onto the boat. Uh, we've got a dog, uh, a bloke sitting in a chair enjoying the uh, trip and uh, a light there for you know, when the boat goes for a, a canal. I'll just uh, nick that from a bit of detail from a coach so perhaps the owner's a railway enthusiast and he pinched that from his time on the railways. At the stern we have another piece of rope, a life ring and the captain of the vessel. As you can see I've added some weathering to the boat and it certainly doesn't look like you know it's brand new, it's got a bit of age to it and I've also glazed the windows with some of the deluxe materials glue and glaze. So I'll go ahead and place the boat into the canal and we'll add a final few water effects and details. So I think I'll put the boat something sort of around there as if you know, it's just emerged from the bridge and it's just passing, continuing down the canal. I certainly wouldn't want to moor here if that was my boat, so I can't blame uh, the owners for continuing past this section of the town. So to make this look a little bit more convincing, I'm going to add some very gentle water ripples and for that I'm going to use some glossy Mod Podge. This is a technique that I'm sure many of you have seen uh, Luke Towen over at Boulder Creek Railroad use on his various uh, water scenes on his dioramas. So uh, as I'm doing a relatively sort of gentle body of water, you know, it's a canal, it's not an actual river uh, with a flow, uh, I think the Mod Podge uh, should work pretty well. So I'm going to use his technique and uh, we'll make sure to concentrate uh, a little bit more turbulence around the, uh, the bow and the stern of the canal boat. So I've just brushed some of the Mod Podge on and as you can see it doesn't look very good because the next thing you need to do is use an airbrush to create the more convincing rippled effect. And then finally, we'll just put uh, a little bit of the scale model scenery newspapers in a couple of places, just sitting on the surface there. A good opportunity while the glue is still wet. So I'll leave that to dry and while it's drying I'm going to go back down to the workbench and carry on working on the office building that fits into this area here. I've been very busy with the office building over the past two weeks and while there's still a lot left to do with it, it's certainly looking a lot better than it was. So I'll crack on with that for a bit and if I have time we'll also add a little bit more scenic detail to the towpath just here. A few mooring rings, perhaps the odd bench and litter bin, we'll see how we go. So while I've been waiting for the Mod Podge to dry, I've just been progressing a little bit more with the office building and a few other bits. And you can see I've also uh, done some graffiti and some subtle weathering to that bridge girder there. And it just blends things in with the urban surroundings. It did look far too clean. So if we move over to the office building itself, you can see this has come a long way from the previous cardboard shell. So I've still got quite a ways to go, but as you can see, this is basically uh, the same style of building as the previous office block. 
I built uh, about two years ago now on the uh, other side of the layout which has now been uh, ripped up uh, pending this uh, this sort of upgrade in the scenery. So I still had the files obviously for the building so I just uh, made another one and this time I decided to clad it in uh, brick and just be a little bit more adventurous uh, with some of the plaster card and stuff like that and just make it look a little bit more interesting and a little bit more detailed so it better blends in with its surroundings. The previous attempt at this building I, th I don't think it really looked um, quite up to standard now that we've uh, sort of upped our game a little bit on this area. So no matter, just uh, used the lessons I've learned and uh, made it look a little bit more interesting. So on this particular version of the building I've made a few changes and a few upgrades so I've changed these shops uh, that go on the ground floor and as you can see we now have a little bit of a sort of a greengrocer sort of fruit and veg uh, type place and you can even see some uh, some containers outside with uh, various uh, items of produce in them and I'll probably put those up on some tables once I get this scene fully finished and then over on this side I previously had a electronics uh, store here and I'm going to continue the same idea this will be an electronics store but uh, once again I'm going to sort of upgrade things a little bit make it look a bit more impressive than the previous effort. I've also studied uh, buildings of this type extensively on Google Street View and done my best to try and portray some of the drainage and how the sort of windows are set into the brickwork and you know, electronic, uh, electrical cabling and fuse boxes and particularly sort of drainage and stuff like that. So let's take a look at the back of the building where I've once again uh, taken a bit of a step further uh, than the previous building and really tried to make it look a bit more detailed and interesting. So here at the rear of the building you can see there's quite a bit more detail compared to what I did on the previous version of the building and that's one of the main reasons why I decided to rebuild this as uh, many of the uh, faces of the previous building wouldn't have worked uh, in this area. So you can see we've got the windows installed and I've installed various uh, items like drainage, electrical cabling and also a bit of plumbing. So I've still got a fair ways to go with this building. I'll be recycling the uh, interiors from the previous attempt and they should uh, pop back inside. So I will save a little bit of time there, but uh, in the end I just ended up rebuilding the entire exterior of the building. So it has taken quite a few evenings to get to this stage. So I'll keep working on it. A little bit of graffiti on this side, on the uh, canal facing side of the building, uh, certainly wouldn't go amiss. And also it needs weathering as well, you know, it's far too clean and shiny. But uh, I'm quite pleased with how that's looking. It's uh, blending in with a sort of industrial prefab look that I'm going for at this section of the layout. And from certain angles it really complements the block of flats uh, that's sitting over there. The block of flats are still very much a work in progress, lots of details left to add to those. But uh, hopefully in the uh, not too distant future we should have a few more nasty monstrosities on this section of the layout. The water effects over in the canal are almost dried, another couple of hours and that should be ready to go. And I'm quite pleased with the effect, it certainly does the trick. And a, a nice bonus that I wasn't expecting is uh, I no longer pick up a really heavy reflection of the brick wall in the surface of the water. Having the uh, ripples there has uh, you know, disrupted the reflection of the, the rest of the layout on the room. And uh, the camera now looks a little bit more favorably into the water. So I'll wait for the rest of that water to dry. We'll do a little bit more work to the office building. I'm not sure how far I'll get with it in this video, but uh, it's certainly starting to uh, look a little bit more impressive than just having that uh, cardboard shell sitting in the way of the view. It's now an actual feature and it actually draws your eye in and you want to look at it as opposed to trying to look over it or around it. So it's been several weeks since the last clip. I decided I really wanted to get this building a little bit closer to completion as it really sets the whole sort of canal scene and without it in position the canal looks a little bit boring. So I've gone away and busied myself in the evenings getting this thing a little bit closer to completion so you can see the canopy on the market has been finished, I've done some tables and a few things outside. Most of the shop signage is complete, although the market uh, needs a few more transfers adding, I think perhaps a little tagline and a phone number perhaps, that would uh, certainly go a long way to make that look a bit better. And I've also done some subtle weathering to the building with some oil paints. The main focus of the work has been on the interior for the building, 
the previous version of this building that I constructed uh, some time ago had an interior and what I've done is I've basically rebuilt those interiors and recycled all the little details and figures um, to create some, some new interiors for the building that I think are certainly a little bit more uh, professional and a little bit more well finished. So to build the interiors I followed a similar uh, process to what I did previously on the same style of building and that was to create a card shell that goes inside that can be easily removed it's not fixed in with glue or anything you can just lift the building off of the surface which will leave these sections behind and that will allow me to you know do any maintenance repair the lighting fix any detail that might have come unglued or you know any problem that could potentially arise with a building like this when it's all detailed it is a bit of a pain uh, to get in there if it's all you know set in stone glued in position you know you can't you can't put your hand in to you know, write a figure that's fallen over. And to make things a little bit nicer, I've also made the buildings have removable interiors. So as you can see there, there's the interior for the market. And I can simply remove that and then you know add extra bits and pieces to it if I feel the need or repair something that got damaged. I've also added some more comprehensive lighting to the building in the form of these homemade light strips. So I got some of that uh, LED uh, tape, self-adhesive tape, stuck it to some plastic card and then used other bits of plastic card to sort of box it all in and make something looking a little bit more like an actual light fixture. They're a little bit difficult to see but once I get it turned on it should be a little bit more apparent. I've also added some scale model scenery blinds and I've just sort of cut that kit up into various sections and spliced and glued various bits together. Not being too concerned about the fit and finish as blinds, certainly in an office building that's past its prime, tend to get quite damaged and misshapen. So if there's anything in there that doesn't look very good, uh, we'll just put that down so it's an old building and the, the maintenance has really lapsed. At the rear of the building there are corridors, blinds, doors and the addition of stairs so it is physically possible to get um, from the bottom of the building to the top via the stairs. And on the back side of this section we can see the provision of a kitchen just there and this frosted window here represents the, uh, the bathroom. Uh, I've modelled a, uh, a partition wall inside with a door so there's clearly a room uh, on that floor that uh, doesn't have any windows on it and that will be uh, the bathroom and the drainage detail that's on the rear of the building the, dr the water drains do line up with these two windows to represent drainage for the you know, sinks in the bathroom and the sink in the small canteen on the top just there so I've really tried to cover all the bases but there is only so much you can do and so far you can go um, before you completely lose your sanity because this stuff is just so small there comes a point where you have to say to yourself am I really going to be able to notice any of this so I've taken it as far as I'm prepared to take it and with any luck once all the lights are on and everything it should look uh, much more interesting than just a you know bare uh, barren uh, inside shell really so we'll see how it looks I've used some very small wires for the lights and as you can see they just come out of the uh, interior wall just there. I've super glued them to the surface so they shouldn't interfere with the uh, removal of the building shell. Should all be okay and then I'll just drill a small hole um, in the layout just to take the wires down underneath and we can get everything plugged in. Okay, so I've wired up the building temporarily. Once it's all uh, finished with the wiring, each floor will be individually switchable, so you'll be able to turn on uh, different parts of the building. But for now, it's just all wired together, and I've yet to add any resistors to tone the brightness down. So it'll be a little bit uh, too bright and garish, but uh, it'll at least uh, prove the concept, and we'll be able to see how things look. Well, I'm well pleased with that. You can see all the little details. So we've got the cubicles to partition off the uh, the office spaces. You can see the desk on the right has a phone. Obviously, there's a chap there with a green tie, contemplating why his job's so terrible. A couple of computers over here, 
haven't put too many computers in the office. You know, 1989, they would have been incredibly expensive and there would have only been a few in the office. Most of them would have just been terminals rather than actual workstations. Moving over to the vacant floor, you can see the blinds there. I've deliberately put some uh, put the blinds in more of a down position so they obscure uh, the lack of detail in there, but I think that's actually quite a nice little feature and just uh, makes the building look a bit more interesting. And then down here again, you can see we've got more office cubicles. There's another chap there, got a load of paperwork on his desk. Got the blinds more raised, obviously, so you can see inside. And there's more people there as well with more paperwork. I've just added a one kilo ohm resistor to the wiring. It should hopefully tone the brightness down as that was uh, quite a bit too much. For the sake of a bit of LED tape and some plastic art, I'm very pleased with how the lights have come out. Uh, they look half convincing at a glance and certainly look uh, like they are actually a model of a light fixture and not just some uh, nasty uh, LED you know, wiring and stuff just sort of draped on the ceiling, which is what I did the first time round, which didn't look very good. So although you might not look at it from this angle very much, the detail is there. Okay, so I'm going to call it a day there. We'll get a few running shots and see how the building sort of looks uh, in reference to the canal. But generally I'm quite pleased with how that's come along and I'm looking forward to getting uh, much more sort of street lighting and other building lighting added to this area. As you can see with the trains in the background, it really creates a whole sort of different scene. So looking forward to uh, making some more progress with that. And as always, I'll be back as soon as I can with the next video. And how long that'll be, I have no idea because sometimes some of this stuff just takes weeks and weeks and weeks to put together. 